helpful watercolor tips and tricks lesson 7 and today is about water control in watercolor painting most asked question from my students water control in watercolor painting and in my lesson i will talk about how i deal with it how it is working with realistic watercolor painting in my style because water control depends from different techniques different painting approaches different subject and different painting size i know it is a bit overwhelming but let's try to dive in into my way of water control in realistic watercolor painting First of all, it's important the size of water glasses. I use two small size water glasses for my painting. Big jars make a huge difference. You just tend to get more water from bigger jars. Smaller amount is more way of control your water consumption in painting. So one glass is for mixing watercolors. As you can see, uh, from my tutorials in the beginning, I mix, I pre-mix all watercolor pigments I need. And as I do that, water gets dirtier and dirtier. And for that, I use one of the glasses all the time. As I dip in, brush there, I wash it, water becomes dirtier and dirtier. Until it is super dark and not suitable for watery layers in your beautiful painting, which is clean and neat, paper is white. And as you can see, when I wipe my brush, the water from the brush is still a little bit dirty because the water is dirty. That is left for washing my brush, mixing watercolors. The second glass stays completely clean for nice and clean watery layers on your painting. Also important what kind of brush you dip in the water and how you dip in the water. If you are taking a big brush, the biggest you have for a medium or small size painting and you completely dip it till the end of your water jar, you will get a big bottle of water. The smaller brush you are dipping, the smaller amount of water you are getting. So the size do matter. Size of the brush and amount of water depends on the size of the painting. If you have a huge and big painting, then you are taking a bigger brush. And for smaller, smaller brushes. My way of how I dip watercolor brushes in the water jar is slightly different. I never dip my brushes until the very end of the water glass. I dip it slightly in the water, take the excess amount on a paper towel and then I apply water layer to the paper. That way I'm more in control and if it's a little bit uh, getting too dry I can do it again. Never dip until the end because the water is sliding through the handle down and you will have a dripping water from your brushes. Here is shown a big variety of watercolor brushes. From the smallest one, Windsor & Newton double zero brush for very very super fine details, to big squirrel brush for a huge painting i mean like a, this for my style it should be a very big painting because this brush loads a lot of water and makes a big puddle of water for these size of paintings as you can see it's middle size to small size different watercolor paintings, more intense, less intense, I use only two brushes. With these two brushes I can handle water perfectly, I can have pigment 
as I needed load brushes with pigment this is slightly too big this is a way too big these two brushes are perfect for these size of paintings even this kind of small painting was done with these two brushes water and pigment control perfect I draw six circles and we will test different type of water applying on these circles with different brushes first is our big brush and I see some students use huge brushes and this is way too big for such a small area and as you can see little puddle appears on the paper and we don't need that we don't need any puddles visible if you have a visible puddle in your water layer it means there's too much of water and as we start applying pigment it starts to flow on itself and this is also way too much water even if it's even it's not dripping from my brush but it's too much in order to have a perfect and smooth layer we need more control which means lesser amount of water now let's take a normal brush but still dip it quite deep in a water jar again we have a little puddle even it can drip away from the paper again this is too much water even from a normal size brush putting pigment and as you can see again it's floating on its own we are not in control where the watercolor pigment goes and then we again dip it in the water add more water because we are not using paper towel we are not taking away the excess amount of water and what happens it's too dark too saturated and we are not in control where the pigment is going third one is we are taking a little less amount of water still we are not using paper towel in this circle applying watercolors still a little bit too much because pigment is moving too fast and it's a little bit too much for the first layer and again we take another dip in the water we're not using paper towel and then it slightly tends to live on its own the first circle is done where I'm dipping brush in the water taking the excess amount on the paper towel as you can see and I'm making the surface moist now I load my brush with pigment I also remove the excess amount of pigment on the paper towel and you can see that nothing floats on its own no puddles I'm in control how I make my circle how I make my edge lines and everything looks smooth transparent is what we need for realistic watercolor painting in order to control our brush strokes the amount of water next circle we are taking lesser amount of water making the surface slightly moist no puddles very small amount of water loading brush with pigment and it still works a little bit stiffer watercolor layer is moved not so freely but still we have a nice smooth circle and we are in control of the edge lines and now I'm testing wiping out the pigment from the paper with clean and dry brush and as you can see with transparent layers it's so easy I always I almost lift out so much that the white paper is shining through from the third circle it is still completely dry second circle I can't wipe with many attempts I can't wipe the amount I, I need it's still quite blue it's not visible white paper 
and this is too saturated and when I get questions like my paintings are too dark I can't wipe the watercolor layer maybe that's the problem too saturated and the last circle is done without any water layer and what happens no smoothness no evenness nothing is so beautiful as the previous two circles yes I'm in control of the edge lines but in some places the watercolor layer is too saturated and some too light now let's test on these two rectangles why we need water layer at all why i'm always applying watery layer first before applying watercolors here i have two rectangles one is applied with smooth water layer not too much not too less dipping brush in the water and as you can see no puddles if i need i can apply more to cover the whole surface of the rectangle the surface is smooth now i'm picking watercolors while the area while the surface is moist i can move my watercolors i'm loading my brush with more pigment still transparent brush strokes are quite fast and wide I'm applying this watercolor layer and as you can see it is quite smooth the layer for the first painting for the first layer is very smooth and nice watercolors are moving very nicely smoothly I'm not pushing and rubbing paper too strong and it covers the surface quite fast because the surface underneath is wet and also I can easily lift out pigment from the left side which almost always my paintings have a lighter area on the left side and I can easily lift out the pigment make that area lighter reserve the space for the light For the second rectangle, we are not applying water at all. We are going straight with watercolors. I'm trying my best to make brush strokes very smooth and nice, but I can't get the smoothness. Even I dip my brush in the water, load it with more pigment. It's very uneven. It's not smooth at all. To cover the whole surface I need to use quite a lot of pigment and already in the first layer my painting that rectangle looks quite saturated which means I can't go with layering too much here and it can lead to flat looking painting and of course I can forget about the smoothness of my uh, of my painting with this technique i'm in control of the edges of everything here but not the smoothness and not transparency and as i want to smooth i need to rub more harder the surface and it can damage the paper also it wears out the brushes much faster and now if i want to lift out some area it is almost impossible it looks so not not so good not even at all no smoothness just a light line which doesn't show that it's some kind of light area it's just a light line and everything is not so good and perfectly looking while on the first rectangle I can still add very transparent amount of layers and I can build my layers gradually transparently and make it everything more smoother and neater looking 
For the second rectangle, I need to go quite dark for the second layer. Now let's have a closer look on the very first watery layers. As you can see, this is too much. The puddle appears on the bottom if I lift the paper. And when the brush has a little dip on the tip of the brush, it also means there's a little bit too much water. I'm using always paper towel. I'll take away the excess amount of water and then I can evenly and smoothly apply water. Not too much, just to make the surface slightly moist. This is the perfect amount for the first layer of applying watercolors. You can always add a little bit more if it's getting too dry. And in the first, you can see that watercolors start to float around on themselves. Also, the second one, you see that the watercolors are moving and the last one has a perfectly even coat of watercolor layer. Thank you for watching, thank you for being here. Hope you learned something new, found this video helpful and it will help you in understanding more water control. It all depends also on the practice. The more you will practice, the more you will understand this issue with water control. Thank you.